All right, here we are. It's the summer of Game Fest time. Okay, so with the timer I have it muted right now cuz music. But with the timer counting down for Summer Games Fest, um what so this morning what we know is in the Summer Games Fest for sure. What we know is in the showcase as confirmed by Jeff Keighley is Street Fighter 6, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, The Callisto Protocol, Gotham Knights, Marvel Midnight Suns, One Piece Odyssey, and TMNT Shredder's Revenge. Which, I feel like that's a game we've been hearing about for years now. Like, I'm... We have heard so much about that TM, TMNT Shredder's Revenge now, and I'm like, that's that's like, um... What, Top Gun Maverick, where I'm just like, come out already? Um... what was What was it? Oh, there. So we, that's the things that Jeff Keighley confirmed. There was also a thing about Among Us and Fortnite. I don't know if that was real or not, but I saw it this morning when I woke up. So that might be something that gets talked again. We, I, I would not be surprised if Among Us and Fortnite or something like that is talked about during this. We know Jeff Keighley's face is in Among Us, but then this morning PlayStation leaked The Last of Us Part One. Which is basically a full remake of The Last of Us. Right, the first Last of Us game on PS3 that isn't even a decade old yet is already getting remade. Even though it already got remade on the PS4. So, I don't get it, but yeah, that's happening. But, um, as is being pointed out, The Last of Us remake... It's, right, I say, like, oh, this game didn't need to be remade. It was already kind of, it was at least ported to PS4. It doesn't need to be remade for PS5. Technically, that's actually not, like, the Super Mario 64 DS was only 8.4 years. Wind Waker was just, a, was only 10 years. Um, Ocarina of Time remake on 3DS, about 12 years. So technically, it's not that much of a difference. And I'm sure there are other examples. I don't know, just the, the first Last of Us getting remade is just kind of so weird to me. Because I still, again, that feels like, even though it was on PS3, the first time I played it was PS4. So that still feels like a relatively recent game. All things considered. So, I don't know, I just find that weird. But yep, all that got leaked this morning, and Jeff Keighley's reply was just a shrug emoji. So, we shall see, but... Yep, because we knew PlayStation was going to have some sort of presence at the show. And so it being The Last of Us... Yeah, you can get The Last of Us remastered at Best Buy right now for like 10 bucks, according to Wario64. Oh, and I don't... The webcam... God, I have... I don't know why the fuck I'm having so many issues with this thing. But nope, it wasn't working with me today, so... He's gonna have to rely on my lovely sound of my lovely voice. Isn't that right, guys? Ugh. <laughs> I'm so fucking stupid. <laughs> I'm looking through this to see if I think anything else. 
No, not really. All right, it should start any second now. I don't know how far behind my stream is. Technically, I think it's already um whatever. All right, let's get into the summer game. This the show is two hours long, uh, approximately a little under that probably, but. I didn't even have to bring a drink for a drinking game. This is Summer Game Fest, a live showcase of what's next in the wide, wide world of video games. We are live here in Los Angeles. So whether you're streaming from home or watching inside an IMAX theater, welcome oh, yeah, to they our did showcase do that. event. Ugh. Over the next few hours, God. we'll give you updates. I could imagine going to, love, to a theater. Be joined by special developer guests and, yes, have a few surprises along the way, too. Now, what I love about this show is that it's a true cross-industry showcase. Whether you play on Xbox, PC, PlayStation, Switch, or mobile, we'll have games. Even though Nintendo's not participating in this, choice, they're like, them and Ubisoft are like the only two studios. That simply loves the art of amazing AAA. video games. But fuck the Ubisoft. The biggest franchises in the industry are here, like Call of Duty. You'll get introduced to exciting new worlds, new teams, and we'll make room for small, independent developers who we think deserve the spotlight, too. If we do this right, hopefully you'll discover a few new games to put on your wish list. And even if you don't get every announcement that you desire, let's face it, you're not going to get everything today, but we've got a lot of great stuff. So no Death Stranding 2. Over 30 years ago, Capcom Street Fighter hit arcades, and ever since, this legendary Japanese fighting game series has continued to evolve. Street Fighter 6 is coming in 2023, and right now, we're excited to officially confirm a character coming to the game and show you the exclusive first gameplay for Now, characters have been Enjoy. not leaking for it, but people have been like spotting like characters in the background. And then Capcom's doing their own showcase in like a few days that I will not be streaming, I should say. You will know what hits. Is this Guile? Let me have some fun. Let's get this mission started. Yep. But yeah, I I will not be streaming the Capcom showcase. Last year's Capcom showcase was miserable. And there's a reason I didn't stream Sega's this year. Cuz that was also pretty bad. has always been ridiculous. I hadn't put together that if you turn it on its side, it's VI. For some reason, I hadn't put that together when we when it was revealed it's all last, what, last all week? Right. Next, it's time for a brand new game announcement here at Summer Game Fest. Check this out. I don't recognize the logo. Focus. Sergeant Leo Alvarez of the CM Leth Recon Squad. Our mission was to enter the Tantalus base, locate the ComSec relay, and bring it back online. We found the relay, but there was a problem. Um, Don't close now, Private. Close that, Close that gate. Nothing gets in here. Ray didn't make it. it. It's 20th Century Fox, so 
I'm thinking it's something I it god is this, is this alien Willis, take the lead. are they remaking aliens colonial marines <laughs> that that's the gearbox one right the really shitty oh, one this ain't good what we found was a new kind of evil and it found us first Wasn't human. Yep, Retreat! sure enough. Willis, you can tell just based on the angle, like the camera no, angles, no, that it's no. it was aliens. Was it Alien Isolation that people liked? Was that the one? I kind of don't remember. I don't know. I know there was that the bad one, which I think was Colonial Marines. And then there was the good one, which I think was Isolation. when I close my eyes. I still see it. Now everyone's dead. And someone needs to know. Dark Descent. Okay. Oh, it's like a... Is it a top-down? Like a... Oh, that... That's different, anyways. I'll that give it that, because most other alien games I can think of are first-person shooters, and I just figured Next, this one was. Two years ago at the Game Awards, hmm. we revealed the Callisto Protocol from the creative forces behind the Dead Space franchise. Today, I am thrilled to get to show you the first raw gameplay alongside its creator, Glenn okay. Scofield. But first, here's the quote-unquote scope <sighs> cut of the brand new trailer with a little more gore. Oh gosh, yeah. So we also saw this at uh, Sony. Two, right now we're two for three of things at the State of Play last week. So that's rather interesting. Take a look outside. Did you know that they call Callisto the Dead Moon? Just like you would have been if I hadn't fished you out of that wreck. So whatever you're holding on to right there, that's your old life. You gotta let that See, go. I'm just not a, like, 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 I know Dead Space is good, is entirely but I've hands. just, I'm not just a fan of horror games like this. Like, the closest I've ever gotten to something like this is Prey or <laughs> Bioshock. <laughs> God, we might get a new Bioshock today. It's just not my style. I can't tell if this is if this is the same trailer from the state of play. Some of these shots definitely look the same. I just love that last part. Gives me chills every time. Edition bullshit. 
That's right, we know what you wanted to see. And joining me now, Glenn Schofield, striking distance. Glenn, uh, first of all, congratulations. This game looks absolutely incredible. And I gotta say, the fact that you have built this team, this studio, new IP, shipping this December, all in COVID, blows me away. So congratulations. Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, thanks for having us. I really do appreciate it, Jeff. Um, and you know, for a second, just give me a second. Yeah, you know, I want to thank you uh, for all you've done for the game industry uh, all these years, man. I, I think I've known you like 16, 17 years now, and uh, um, you've been an ambassador. Um, you've amplified new games, new studios, and uh, I, I just wanted to thank you. I really do oh, appreciate well, it. Thank you. It's not about me. It's about you guys. Yeah, I, I know. I, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And yeah, it's so fun to do these shows and to show. I don't know. There's games. some people saw the trailer, but what I'm so excited today is that you just. I don't know. I know there are people who are like, nope, I won't fall for any of the game industry's bullshit. When they see it, but tell I'm willing to let them have there. some art. Yeah, we got a couple minutes of, uh, like you said, like raw gameplay. Um, it's two segments in the first half of the game. Uh, one is a med bay. Another one is a power station. And you're going to see uh, some new enemies, some brutality, some uh, just about everything. We were showcasing a new uh, weapon called the grip. Okay. It's a, like a gravity gun, but it picks up the enemies and it shoves them into giant fans. So it's it prey. Apart, They're not prey. prey. I mean, and, so it's uh, dead space. And then check out the uh, the nice ending we have, where we uh, even though the gravity gun is Half Life, I mean, main character Jacob and because um, Dead Space was the laser and, uh, cutter. Just for a second, I, I want to thank the team, man. Like you said, through COVID, through everything else, the dedication, the hard work, uh, you guys are amazing. Thank you very much. Uh, well, Glenn, I got to say, again, you know, what you guys are shipping this year, this looks like a world-class next-gen game. Uh, it's, it's rare that teams are bringing something out like this this year, and let's let the footage speak for itself. Glenn Schofield, Thanks. Striking Distance. Here it is, the first gameplay of the Callisto Protocol. Now, it's interesting that we're seeing this again, because I still think we might later in the show see the Dead Space remake. I think it's totally possible. Oh, it's like you have the force. I fully believe that this is um on next gen hardware. Cuz while it, it looks it looks good, it doesn't look perfect. So like this isn't like some Ubisoft um Watch Dogs trailer, right? Like this isn't entirely pre-scripted cuz it doesn't look perfect. I I give them credit for that. Which is actually really sad that I, I that I can, because like this should that should be the standard, but game industry is so fucked up, and they use so much like bullshit in it. That right, some that it's actually kind of refreshing to see someone like just accurately showing their game. That just happened. All right, moving on. This October, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 arrives. Infinity Ward is once again returning to its roots for a modern day action game. 
and today we're about to show you the world premiere of its gameplay with a level playthrough. To tell us more, let's head to the Port of Long Beach to check in with Johanna Ferris, the head of Call of Duty. Now this isn't a remake. This is like a new modern warfare, right? We usher in a new era. I literally give less than I should about this. Like I actually did like the original Modern Warfare 2. I like the first Modern Warfare. But the fact that we that like Call of Duty is so desperate for new games that they're literally just making a they're remaking the second one without remaking it. Oh my fucking god. Oil rigs, cargo ships and staggering odds are just the beginning. Here is Modern Warfare 2. Also, fuck Activision Blizzard. I didn't say that, I didn't say that yet, but absolutely fuck Activision Blizzard. What a shitty fucking studio. Unionize. Raven Software is already unionizing, which Raven Soft it has developed some of the Call of Duty games. Let's hope, or at least Ravensoft QA. Let's hope this spreads out to the rest of the industry and to the rest of Activision Blizzard. Cause fuck this studio. the main deck. What's your status? Boarding the ship with Shadow 3 now. Roger that. I'm so fucking bored. God, fuck Activision Blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> fuck Activision Blizzard.
ourselves a gunfight. Missile controls are on the bridge. Have to stop the line. Oh yeah, Starbucks unionized, yeah. Good. Or at least Starbucks in Albany, New York. Good for them. Go follow, um, at a better ABK on Twitter, which is a better Activision Blizzard King, which is, you know, fighting, which is a workers' alliance, fighting for workers' rights, you know, to make sure that games like this aren't made by shitty corporations who mistreat and um, abuse their employees. now and get early access to the open beta. That's yeah, what we're talking fuck about. Activision Blizzard. Joining us now, up from Long Beach, Johanna, great to see you. How's everything? It's great. Thanks. Uh, great to have you with us and also Jeff from uh, and again, Infinity Ward. So I don't blame the, the people like, on the ground the working on these incredible. games. Uh, I blame the upper management, the executives. Uh, are the are those are the people at problems. So, um, those are the ones really making all the shitty decisions. Uh, Kevin, those are the ones causing the abuse. The people on the ground just trying to make good games and you know trying to work their jobs. You know, Nothing not, wrong with those people, what we just saw today, but, uh, especially because those are the ones who are mostly getting abused. Uh, that were, you may recognize from the older franchise that we're reimagining are uh, Simon Ghost Riley and, uh, of course, uh, Soap John McTavish. Um, and then a couple other new characters in here that we're really excited uh, that we got to uh, create for this game. Um, first, uh, Commander Philip Graves and uh, Mexican Special Forces. Uh, I could have gone and got water while that was going uh, on and nobody would have noticed. Because like really I'm almost out already. Guy who's super capable and Fuck, a guy, I didn't even uh, think to do that. As important as Task Force 141. Um, but as far as the level's concerned, um, you know, this, I, I got a shout out to, to IW. You know, this was tr a tremendous 
collaboration across all of the, the different uh, disciplines. As you saw, everybody coming together, some really uh, motivated devs here. And uh, you know, you saw the, the wind and the uh, animations and the awesome sound design. And of course, our new water tech, which is actually pushing the boat in different directions. It's creating a physically dynamic environment, allowing for the cover you were seeing. In certain cases, you could be behind cover, and then suddenly that cover would shift and leave you exposed. But it also leaves the enemy exposed, creating this emergent gameplay. Um, so ag again, I'm, I'm very excited. Just can't wait. That I'm so excited that we get to show it off today. And that's just a hint of where things are going to go. Uh, Johanna, tell us a bit about Call of Duty overall. Modern Warfare 2, obviously, you know, we're so excited that it's back this year. But you've got lots going on across Call of Duty. What can we expect from you guys this year? Yeah, we. Um, first of all, thanks for having us here. We're just so excited for October 28th. It's such a big moment, not just for Modern Warfare 2 and everything that Jeff and the team at Infinity Ward have built, but it really marks the step change, what we're calling a transformational moment for the entire franchise. You're gonna see incredible rendering, incredible graphics, all the things just within the game itself, built all on one shared engine now, across Warzone and Modern Warfare 2 going forward. Oh, course, so the What the Golf the developer new Warzone experience where is making a Warzone new game um, called What be, the Bat. Um, which is a VR game about living with like baseball um, bats for hands. Well. So what the Golf is a the really weird, there, really fun game. Um, I recommend again, I play, like, like testing it out. So, so oh, a new um, What the Bat game. As well for players on the go. Meta, oh, it's We're Meta on Quest Steam, in Steam. You know, yeah. Yeah. Hope it comes to PlayStation VR. Because I would play, I'll play it there. Because I actually have that. Ask a little bit about Warzone too. I know we just, you know, we're showing gameplay here on this, but can you tell us anything? There's a little bit. It seems like there was a little bit of a tease maybe in the trailer yesterday. Yeah. Well. That's way more interesting than any. What the bat? A new game by what the golf developer? Way more interesting than anything going on here. Elements, but we will get into the details of Warzone 2.0 for sure. It will be an extension of the Modern Warfare 2 universe. So all the more reason why we think this game. This moment is, is such an important uh, title for all of us <laughs> looking looking ahead. And like we said, we're having a That's bold really vision cute. around the entire future for the franchise. So we're in, we're in position. We're really excited. All right. Well, we're looking forward to October. Thanks so much for giving us a first look at the gameplay. Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2. Thanks, Johanna and Jeff. Um, all right. Well, we've got lots more Summer Game Fest still to go. And now it's time to announce a classic PC gaming franchise is coming back with a sequel over 30 years after its first release. I love this game uh, when I was growing up, so I'm honored to share this very first look. Monkey Island? Um. Return of... Because I know there are rumors about a new Monkey Island something or other. Honestly, the only thing I can think of is the original Prince of Persia, but I know that's not this. It just uses it just uses the same style. I think it's called rotoscope. No, it's not. Is it rotoscoping? It might be rotoscoping. Flashback Square. I'll be honest, I have no idea. I have... I've, nope, I know nothing about that. The, I, the, the new or the right, original. Back, time. back in 2017, we announced Witchfire at the Game Awards. Almost five years later, I am so excited that the team at the Astronauts in Poland has put together an in-depth look at the gameplay of this dark fantasy first-person shooter, which will enter early access soon. I am so excited hmm. to play this. I bet you will be too after you see this. That was five years ago. You better believe I don't remember that. Actually, holy shit, do I kind of remember this? There, like, there wasn't like a gameplay or it was just like a very like it was a CGI trailer. I might actually kind of remember some. The, the castle is what stands out to me. Weirdly enough. Huh. I don't know. I might I, to I might totally not, but I'm also my
You know, when they said, like, mad, like, witch whatever, which, oh god, I've already forgotten the name of the game. But when they said, like, first person shooter in, like, a magical, like, witch world, part of me honestly expected you to, uh, to be, like, slinging spells like you would, you know, shoot a gun. Right? But instead of guns, you were just, you were using magic like you would. Which fire, yeah. But no, you're just using actual straight up guns. <laughs> In a weird way, it reminds me of, um. Pal World. Where it's like, it's this thing okay, that, like, next up comes an shouldn't have guns, but does. A new independent studio in Europe starring some very familiar names. Enjoy this world premiere new game announcement. Officer Taylor Medlog, 29. Today, um, I can't believe what I saw. Solis, everything okay in there? You could have told me this was the opening trailer to the Callisto Protocol and I would have believed you. The spacesuits look exactly the same, even though this is Mars, clearly. Fort Solace. Roger Corn, Troy Baker. Ew. That's something okay. brand new, and look who it is. Troy and Roger in person. Guys, uh, this is so fun, the fact that you're working on a game together. What a cool team up. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, I mean, he said we'd recognize familiar guys, faces. Uh, who are your characters in this game? Well, uh, I get to play a character named Wyatt Taylor, a medical officer who's stationed at this uh, base, Fort Solace. And uh, it's the epicenter of this mystery that we'll discover and uncover as we go through the game. And of course, my character will be at times in opposition with Roger's character. The battle we've been waiting to see. <laughs> Every once in a Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. We can't wait to show you what we've been working on. And by the way, Jeff, this looks awesome, man. Yeah, it's man. so great to be here. Thanks for having us. It's, it's, it's so great that you're in another game. We, I mean, it's feeling like this is your first game since it's Red Dead 2. One of the first major ones for a while. And I play a character by the name of Jack Leary. He's a maintenance engineer on a remote Martian mining post. Okay. His job is to make sure that none of the equipment breaks down while it's on their graveyard shift. The graveyard shift meaning Mars and Earth are really far apart from each other and their orbits around the sun. So help is not a simple call away. Uh, I gotta ask, I, I think a lot of people will see this thing and they'll probably wonder, you know, it's a new team, right? Uh, new, you know, independent studio in Europe that's making this, but with huge production values. I'm curious, like, how did you guys get attached to this? Tell us a bit about the background. I, I will say that 2020 to me was the most impactful year for games. It was the first, I mean, obviously we had this unprecedented event with the pandemic and that forced the way that we looked at everything as a society, but also the way this industry functioned. But it was also brand new consoles. We had more tools that were being made available that were leveling the playing field between like the AAA studios and the indie studios or the AAA studios. And so, just like anybody else, we got reached out, uh, James Tinsdale, with this. It was Troy studios, Baker, like, right, who got really uh, annoyed that people were criticizing game, The Last of Us Two. Brief description of what the experience not, is going to be like, and and the very and not for said, like good, it, right? Not feel, like it's a, it's a tight thriller. We pe to feel not people like, like criticizing The Last of Us Two. Uh, Duncan Jones Moon, and I was like, sign me up for like bad reasons. Like, Right, like all the racism oh, yeah. and studio, sexism new and energy. homophobia. And course, but people criticizing The Last of Us 2 for like me? actual yeah, criticism and stuff. Of to see this that was Troy Baker, right? Oh, it was either that him or Nolan it. North, but I, I think it was Troy Baker, if I remember correctly. That this medium provides to performers. We can't wait to show you what we've been working on. Yeah. 
think it's good enough. Yeah, I guess I've seen some of the behind the scenes and the performance capture, Unreal Engine. Yeah, he got mad at people criticizing Last of Us. Can you give us a hint about the the gameplay? Like, what are we gonna do in this game? Yeah, the verbs are always important. So we're gonna let the game speak for itself. We'll be showing you more later on. But uh, this is a game where you, as the player, you're gonna be exploring. We're gonna be discovering. Like we said, it's a very tight thriller. So. You're moving very fast paced through this world. There'll be multiple locations, multiple ways for you to traverse, which we're excited to show you about. Uh, and then the, the narrative is a huge yeah. element to this. The, they, they didn't waste uh, any, any resources on the. the oh, yeah. And then he sold out to NFTs. Story, if I can. Um, yeah. It was one he of was going to. Troy moments. Baker was going to do um, NFTs. There was a lot of. And that got people game. pissed at him. That was at the, the, the forefront of this. And yep. to speak to the performance yep. capture aspect, we brought so yeah, uh, fuck Troy Baker, shout out to Nathaniel, our stunt coordinator, <laughs> who walked us through uh. and really approached this in a completely different way than anything I've ever done before. And he says, "I want to know the story of this fight." And so Roger and I sat down. We said, "These are where our characters are." And he goes, "Give me one hour, and I will come back to you with the story of this fight." And after an hour, he comes to us and he goes, "It was like a like a recovery program. It was 12 steps." And he walked us through this incredible. Fight and I was I, about halfway out, uh, halfway through it, I started tuning him out, and I was like, "Hey man, I just want to let you know I've got no ego about this, but I can do a lot of things, but I, I can't do this." And he grabbed me by my shoulders and he says, "Oh, you can, you will, and it's going to be glorious." And we did. And we it's did. It's like a dance. There was a lot of trust, and it worked out. Yeah, I mean, we're big, excited. Big about stunts. It. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, this is so cool to see. Is it an independent studio doing this, teaming up with you guys? We can't wait to see more. Troy, Roger, thanks for joining us here. Happy to be here. Thank fans. you. All right. Appreciate it very much, guys. All right. Well, next up, keeping up with the space theme, it's time to world premiere a very exciting new game, which will feature a musical score by industry legend Mick Gordon. This one is going to grab you, and we are so honored to debut it. There is a lot of space stuff here, yeah. Does it have the same space suit as the other two? Oh, gosh, yeah, there's been so much space crap. Yeah. I mean, in theory, I don't mind, because space is cool, but, like... You know, it all kind of has this very similar-ish vibe. Even though Callisto Protocol is a horror game, Aliens was Aliens, you know... the little beady eyes, man. That's actually kind of creepy. Doesn't that look great? That was Routine coming to Xbox and PC. It was first announced a decade ago and is now officially back. I can't wait to see more. Wow. Now it's time to check in with a very special guest who's been in his fair share of video games, including most recently... Fortnite as the foundation. Dwayne Johnson, welcome to Summer Game uh, Fest. How are you? Yep, here we go. What's up, everybody? And what's up, Jeff? And what is up to the oh Summer Game God. Fest audience? Yeah, he was in Live Fortnite. I remember when Greg Miller called that, that he was going to come to Fortnite. Epic IMAX theaters. Now, I did see the trailer for Black Adam. I, I'm interested. Again, Shazam was good. And smelly iron paradise, uh, powered by, of course, Zoa Energy, the number one fastest growing energy drink in the game. Uh, you, you guys know again, I don't have uh, camera, games. but I'm rolling uh, my eyes. La Roca in Spanish, uh, Uncle Handsome, sexiest um, man alive, uh, big drink energy. Always room for a cheesy joke. There's always room for the extra large cheese pizza, especially when I'm delivering and I deliver them often. Uh, you guys also know an extra large cheese pizza. And most electrifying surprise in gaming. 
that happened. That's a, that's a college. <laughs> Murph was in uh, Hugh you, Jackman uh, when he was on College Humor. <laughs> when he played, I think, Pat's I stepdad. Say, you know, I've had such a ah, classic. Uh, working with, um, An extra large and, cheese uh, pizza. Over there. We cannot wait to show you what we have in store for the future. And speaking of the future, in the future, you will also know me as Black Adam. Black Adam, as millions of you know around the world who know the Black Adam mythology, he is ruthless, he is unstoppable. And for those who don't, I always like to say a quick tutorial is this. Um, Black Adam has the powers of Superman, but the only difference, well, there's a few differences, but one of the biggest differences is Superman's weakness is magic, and Black Adam's, one of his superpowers is magic. Black Adam's also a villain. Uh, October, I mean, they might be playing him as an anti-hero in the movie, but, um... In theaters only, and you guys will finally see the hierarchy of power... You, you know how it goes. Because, you know, has the... I mean, I'm sure The Rock has played villains. I don't know, The Rock has built his brand as being, like, the... Right, the smile, wink-to-camera guy. So it would be interesting to see him just go... Straight up evil, uh, but healthy, safe, who knows? Stay focused, keep having fun, keep kicking ass, uh, enjoy your gaming, and I'll see you down the road. This is Black Adam. Yeah, here's the trailer for that. What have your powers ever given to you? Nothing but happy. I'm interested to see how they do the Justice Society, the Justice Society of America, the JSA. That's going to be interesting. I was reborn a god. Now, I kneel before no one. You can be the destroyer of this world. Again, they're dealing with him being an anti-hero. Or you can be its savior. Now, I don't know if he's going to be the villain in the new Shazam, however. Like, that is a good question. Like, is he going to be the Shazam villain? Or are they gonna do Mr. Mind, which is what the first movie sets up? Did he just catch a rocket? He got the rocket. I know the the official trailer is much longer than that. Like I feel like they cut out all the JSA stuff out of that, but outright. Um I legitimately don't remember which one. There are so many of these live service games, I couldn't tell you which one Outriders is. Oh, was this the one that didn't work? That when it like came out, like people were like, everybody was like trying to play it, and like a bunch of people like couldn't even get in. Was that Outriders? And then I feel like I haven't heard anybody talk about it in like a year. I have no idea anymore. There are so many of these live service shooters. Switch thing again. Switch thing. Well, there is actually a switch thing in here, huh? We know we're gonna see that at the Capcom show in a few days. I'm so excited for the Cuphead DLC. After replaying the game a few weeks ago, a uh, month ago now, the Xenoblade Xenoblade Three uh, Special Edition went on sale yesterday. I guess the pre-order was a fucking nightmare. I don't know. I don't worry about those things. Fall Guys. Okay. We know Fall Guys goes free to play at the end of the month. 
Or, uh, on the 20th. So yeah, these seem, like, I know these are announcements, these just seem like, generally, like, ads. for all June 21st. I'll be there. It was so fun to see Courage and Ray in that Fall Guys piece, and you can play and download Fall Guys for free starting June 21st across all platforms, including Nintendo Switch, Xbox, PC, and PlayStation. All right, back to another uh, new game. I was really... I'm waiting for, like... Universe from a new team of I was... Again, I had a prediction about uh, fall, new Fall Guys thing. Nope, nothing. That's sad. I, I do Is Frost Giant... Did they say they were a new studio? Because I know Jeff Keighley was hinting at something new from Frost Giant. But I was like, I can't think if I remember them doing anything else. Discovery, this is Command. Storm is in your way. Prepare for extraction. Signal's breaking up. Command, I'll do one last scan. See you soon. Over. I guess it's a former, like, Blizzard developers went off and formed their own studio. Command, I may be on to something. Now, if I'm correct, this is a real-time. I remember. In, I remember right when teasing this, it was teased as like a real-time strategy game. So that might have something to do with it. There you have it, Tim. Congratulations. Stormgate is real. We have a name and some details. Uh, so, first of all, congratulations on this announcement. We're so excited about the return of RTS, brand new uh, franchise. What is a Stormgate, though? All right, so Stormgates are portals that open during a massive solar storm that unleash the infernal host on future Earth. Okay. Uh, 
and we saw some hints of some. Ra I mean, you know, you guys coming from Blizzard and StarCraft, everyone wants to know about races. Uh, you know, tell us about the sides in this RTS game. Yeah, we're unveiling our first two factions okay. today, but there will be more. Uh, so the Human Resistance, and we saw an archaeologist from the Human Resistance in that intro cinematic, uh, and then also the Infernal Hosts, who are these demon-like monsters who come from another world. I think one thing everyone wants to know about, especially your background pedigree of the team, of you know, where do you want to push the RTS genre? It's something we've all loved for decades, but you know, opportunity for a lot of innovation. Um, I know you're going to show us, I think, oh some my gosh. hints of where you're going to go Im image-wise with the actual gameplay made in Unreal Engine, but any sense of what you want to do to the gameplay in this I game? don't know if it's sad Absolutely. that the most interesting I, thing, thing this entire show has been a thing that I already knew about, that we literally got no players. new information for. Where we're really trying to push the genre and be innovative, first off, approachability, um, for one thing, we're free to play, uh, but no pay to win, no NFTs, nothing like that. Um, just to well, yeah, no NFT. Or, I mean, do you want everybody to hate you like Troy Baker? No, of course you don't do fucking NFTs. The there was someone made a ridiculous post about like a future world where like oh you have like NFT video games. God, I wish I could find it. It was so fucking funny. And, like, how, like, uh, from the game, right? bad it yeah, was. Like, this guy's, like, idea so for, like, good. NFT. Oh, wow, I actually did I did bookmark it on Twitter. Oh, shit. <laughs> wow. Uh, I love it. Now, 2023, you said for the beta so people can sign up now, get ready, and I'm just okay. so thrilled. Okay, yeah, for someone being, like, some pro NFT guy made a post that was like, oh, this is the future I dream of for NFT video games. And it's the saddest fucking thing ever. I'll, I'll, I'll read it. If, if I get super bored, I'll mute the stream and I'll read it. I'm excited to share with you. High water. Check this one out. Good morning, high water dwellers. High water pirate radio keeping you in the know with our flow. Alphaville authorities continue to deny false rumors that Alphaville elites are planning to evacuate to Mars. True or not, the one thing we can't deny is that the world ended on a sunny day. Uh, honestly, this already looks more, just artistically, this looks more interesting than anything we've seen so far. Again, the Callisto Protocol looked fine. Like, it's, it's just not my style of game. This reminds me of, uh, maybe it's just the boat stuff, but, uh, Sea of Solitude. Never actually played that one. That was, that was that EA game. Recognize the studio name. What a breath! I am. Trailer. Part of me is actually does like, even if a lot of the stuff I don't care for. Extreme, I do like that Jeff Keighley is like giving some of these smaller, newer, more independent studios equal space amongst like bigger AAA studios, right? The team had long hoped to reveal a new trailer here today, but were understandably unable to complete it in time. Guys, I just want to say we're thinking of you and all the developers impacted by the conflict and hope to be able to share your work at a future show. Okay. All right, our next game is an official selection of the Tribeca Games Festival. It's American Arcadia, where you play Trevor, whose life is being televised with the viewing population constantly voting you up or down. When you become unpopular, you need to start running for your life. Check this out. Huh. Picture a city where technology and science go hand in hand with fun and entertainment. My grandfather, Elijah Walton, had a dream to build the city of tomorrow. That dream is now a reality, and that city is Arcadia. 
a 43 square mile metropolis where each and every citizen enjoys a life of luxury and comfort. Broadcast live 24 hours a day, seven days a week on every digital platform. American Arcadia. Control. Subject on the run on camera 4025. It. Interrupt broadcast immediately. Listen to me. We can't allow Trevor Hills to escape under any circumstances. Trevor. Trevor, can you hear me? Be careful and don't make a sound. Don't worry. I'm going to get you out of there. Yeah, that, that already seems more interest. That, right? That that looks okay. Again, it, it reminds me of like a more beach. colorful limbo or something like that. A long time. But there's trouble in paradise. It's that Watch style out. of game anyways. But... No, that doesn't look bad. Years of rumors. We finally get an update. On this much really? Uh, Dead Island? It was called Dead Island, right? Dead Island 2, specifically. It was Dead Island, right? It's even starting the same way. At least I, uh, that's kind of how I remember the last trailer. Is this? I am thinking of the right thing, right? Unless this is gonna be some sort of like parody thing. Yeah, it's Ghost Simulator. I was like, Coffee Stain, that's Ghost Simulator. I think I even mentioned that a few days ago. But yeah, no, this is this is poking fun of Dead Island. Which got a trailer years ago and then we haven't heard anything since. Instead the developers went on to make um Dying light. Yeah. Wait. Wait, was there ever a Goat Simulator 2? I don't think there was. There you have it. That was Goat Simulator 3, and it's coming later this year to the Okay. Store. I mean, what is that like Naked now, Gun 33 and a third? Okay, we knew this was coming. Heroes from the Avengers and X-Men cross over with supernatural ones like Blade and Ghost Rider for a battle against Lilith, the mother of demons. Today, we've got a look at some new folks set to join the battle. Okay, we I, and I know I know one of them is going to be uh, Scarlet Witch. They were in, there was like a thing there was a thing about that recently. I think also uh, Nico is also probably going to be one of them. I think her name is Nico. I don't remember her last name. Venom. Spider-Man? Actually, I think we already... I think we did know that Spider-Man was here. Or this was also leaked when Scarlet Witch was. Either way, it's... I mean, that's cool. You know? Spider-Man! Who doesn't love Spider-Man? 
Okay, I can think of a bunch of people who get really bitchy about Spider-Man. Okay, I know we can. I know there's a lot of copyright shit. This is one I know for sure we can't do. We're probably already too late. Oh, Evil Hulk? Okay. Yeah, see Scarlet Witch. Doctor Strange? Oh, who cares? work well it did that one time again i i have hopes for that to be good that was midnight suns and now we're moving on to the wonderful Cup world i'm Cuphead, again i replayed cuphead course. earlier this year Can you believe it we're only a couple when um away al, al capo and muggle played it DLC. You see how they did and that? so i'm like so right ready for this Maya from studio mdhr so first of all Maya, it's really coming it's really coming June 30th on all major platforms. We are it's been thrilled. so long. Well, I'm so thrilled, too, that uh, I think all the fans can't believe that this is here. And I've been lucky enough to play this actually on my Steam Deck uh, last week. And you guys gave me a copy. This, I, I can't, people are not going to be ready for how amazing this looks and the backgrounds and what you guys are I'm, I'm so ready. Amped up you know, it's been a long, again, this is a perfect example of, like, you know, gamers will wait. You know, no matter how long you delay something or something gets pushed off. When it comes, we'll be ready for it. The next level from animation, the backgrounds, the music, gameplay design, um, and of course, a new playable character, Miss Chalice. I'm very proud of her. Chalice is fun to play as, and, and even though this is a DLC, it feels like it's its own game inside of Cuphead in many ways. It is. It is definitely. Yeah, you just get get on the island, and, and there you are off to this new. Uh, New territory, which is amazing. yeah, it's our biggest island yet. Super sized bosses, lots of secrets to discover. Um, don't let any rock go unturned. Yes, and lots of challenge ahead. Well, I know you brought. I, I know you want. You don't want people to necessarily have too much spoiled about the game, but you brought a little something. For a little game. something, yeah. It's a uh, brand new gameplay footage of one of our new bosses, Mortimer Freeze. It takes place in an icy arena, um, and features some of my personal favorites. So, like, I think it's. To I don't know how like how big this is this? or whatnot, All right, let's check it out. but they're it's making it like everything that sounds right. like this is a pretty big expansion. Like this is. Like, this is at least the size, like, half the size of the original game, if not the same as the original. Oh my gosh, look at that animation. That's an interesting new weapon, a tri shot. I'm very boring when it comes to weapon choice. Like, I use the generic and three slosher. With, like, a few exceptions. You know, there's a few bosses where, like, the homing shot's really good or whatnot. Interesting. Again, I'm totally down. I, I yeah, like. If you want even more Cuphead, and who doesn't? Tomorrow we will show you an exclusive look at season two of the Cuphead show when I co-host. Technically not it. Technically, it's not season two. Netflix just took the first season of Cuphead and broke it up into two. And that's not all. Because fuck Netflix. All weekend long. Coming up next is the Day of the Devs Indie Showcase with I Am 8 Bit and Double Fine, then Devolver's Marketing Countdown to Marketing. Tomorrow after Wait, week, when is Devolver? I knew Devolver was doing a show. When? With news on Rocket League and the Tribeca Game I'm just going to check Twitter. And Sunday, don't miss the Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase with a look at the future of Xbox and Game Pass. Now we have some exciting news for Nintendo Switch and PC fans about Neon White. A game where you play an assassin from hell. So this got for the chance to this got leaked, or something like that. And the way it got leaked made it sound like there's going to be a Nintendo Direct in the coming days. Now I've actually, I've seen this the dev of this game talk about the game on uh, TikTok. Right, he's been. I've been recently on my for you page. 
that's been uh, the developer has been talking about his game. I don't know. I think it looks pretty good. Honestly, I think this looks pretty decent, all things considered. So yeah, I'm actually kind of excited for it. But yeah, I guess, yeah, there was something about, like, a Nintendo, the developer of this hinted that there was going to be, like, a Nintendo Direct in, like, a week or two. I don't remember the exact date. At 4 p.m. today, there is, um, a Devolver Digital Marketing Countdown thing. So, yeah, at... We've shown you lots so of games today that's made by huge teams. Or wait, wait, now let me do the math. Made by a that would be 3 p.m. Pacific, Over the past year, he's 4 Mountain, 5 Central, and 6, Let's take a look. six um, Eastern, right? Three. Yeah, yeah, that sounds right. So 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific. You know the saying, get knocked down, get up again, that whole spiel. Well, it's time, partner. Time to rise up. Together. It's happening. The big guy's actually going through with it. While I sat at his side, see lives as dollar signs. The stink of corruption all over me. You know who put it there? Nah, not him. Me. Well, I ain't wearing it anymore, and neither are you. Tonight, we wash this whole damn city down. Hmm. Game Pass, okay. Honestly, Game Pass does a lot for me Such nowadays. Cool game, and I'm happy to announce that a PC demo of this game is going live right now on Steam and will be part of the Steam Next Fest next week. I really want more playable games to get in the hands of you guys at home, and that's one of them. Check it out. All right. Joining me now is Megan from Digital Extreme. Warf to talk Again, you could have frame. told Megan, me that Outriders was Warframe so earlier, Canadian? and I would have believed you. We have these Canadian teams on the show. I don't we know how that works out, right? Okay. We do well. We have a great connection. We've also done a lot with Warframe over the years, and I know right now anyone watching on Twitch for more than 30 minutes, this show is going to get a special mm -hmm. Twitch drop, right? That's right. I already have seen people getting it, yes. so it's very exciting. She's right there, loud and proud. Yeah. I 30 minutes for watching. I'm not watching. I'm on YouTube. Kind of take over oh. your special events category, but she is there and she is for you if you are properly linked up. No, Warframe, you know, as I said, we've done a lot over the years. You guys have done incredible things with the game. And I know you have Tenocon coming up in July, which is your big kind of event of the year to reveal what's next. What, what can you tell us? Well, I can't tell too much, yeah. Um, but yeah, July 16th, 2022, it's a digital event again this year. Uh, today, actually, we just launched the digital items for it, so you can get some in-game goodies, some really cool cosmetics, some merch, all that really great stuff went live today. But of course, the reason I'm here is to, you know, kind of debut, we have our Tenno Live during TennoCon, which is our big reveal of the night. and. We usually do a little bit of a, a gameplay, a little bit of a demo, and I think a lot of people can suspect what it might be, but I'm here to kind of confirm what it is that Tunnel Live is going to show. And what is that? Can I say it? Yes, I think you can. Okay, you're going to get your first look at the Deviri Paradox. It's finally! Finally, I know, I know it's been a couple of years. Uh, but Deviri Paradox is going to be what Ten Alive is all about, and I'm so happy. Uh, the team worked really hard on the teaser you're about to yeah. see for it, and I'm just really proud and excited to show it. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for being here on Summer Game Fest. Let's take a look at that right now. My child, my friend, what was done is done. New dangers. New choices await us now. For 
now dream of who we were and of who we have become. Next, it's time for a new look at Honkai Star Rail, an upcoming open world space RPG. Yeah, a lot of space today from Genshin Impact. Yeah, it studio. really is a lot of space. PC. This studio like, holy crap. To deliver, and this new trailer reveals for the very first oh, time. Oh, God, not another Genshin well, Impact. Really I really can't deal with Genshin, any more Genshin Impact fans. God. I. Okay, really, the the real reason I'm annoyed at Genshin Impact is because a lot of artists I like became Genshin Impact fans who only do Genshin Impact fan art. But they used to do, like, so much other cool shit as well, and now they just do Genshin Impact. I mean, they'll move on eventually, that, but ugh, that, made, that made me bitter against the game. That, and of course, it's a monetized piece of shit. I don't know. I hear people found it okay. I never played it. To treat you like family and embark on unimaginable adventures. Remember what you feel in this moment. As long as you know in your heart where you're heading, you will arrive at the end of the story. That's not all from Hoyoverse. Today, I'm excited to introduce you to Zenless Zone Zero, their next major new IP. It's a futuristic urban action game. I have to say, I'm blown away by what I've seen so far. It was announced a couple weeks ago, and it has the detail of Genshin Impact with a fast-paced action style. Here is the world premiere of a brand new look at Zenless's notable characters, armed enemies, and world of danger. For some reason, the title ZZZ just makes me think of 999. That, I think that was, was that a DS game? I think that was a DS game. I don't know. I heard. I remember hearing it was really good, but it's like it's like 200 bucks to get a copy now of it or whatever. Some bullshit like that. Oh my gosh, it's, it's hot. Normally I'd have a fan running, but... Nope, gotta make better audio quality. You know, it's funny, because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a weeb. Well, not actually, but... I watch anime, and yet I just do not give a shit about anime games. Like, at all. You know, I watched good. I mean, we're watching Spy X Family. I think I talked about that last week. It's been pretty enjoyable. One of my but yeah, I just don't care for anime TMNT games. Shredder's Revenge, which reminds us all of the turtles. Again, we've been here about this game for well, years now. I feel like. Development, and the team wanted to use SGF as a way to reveal one exciting aspect of the game they've been keeping under wraps until now. <laughs> Thank you. 
And again, I want this to be good. Like... Yep, there's Casey. Finally. Again, it's got a big cast. It's doing a lot of things. This should be... Like, this game could be really good. And I know it's a lot of people... Uh, Beat-em-ups don't... Like, beat-em-ups are one of those genres that, like... AAA game executives will tell you are as dead like horror games. But they're they're not dead. They're just not as big as like first person shooters, so we don't get as many of them. Six player co-op. My gosh. Are any Ninja Turtles in that Nickelodeon All Stars Brawl game? That wow! I didn't realize it was coming out like next week. Holy shit! Okay. something. I've literally never heard of super people. What is this, a civilization like? Hmm. Is that the first time we've seen Stadia tonight? It might be. It just kind of reminds, it reminds me of a uh, civilization. Ah, uh, you know what? I'll play it on Game Pass. Yeah. Game Pass on Xbox. I was so disappointed to find out that Vampire Survive is only on Game Pass PC. God, 25 years. That's crazy. One piece never read scene. One Piece, Monkey never watched the anime, and, and I definitely don't have any plans to, ever. The setting, a mysterious island I don't mess around with the Big Four. Crew become marooned the Big the Four is scary. The Straw Hat Pirates journeying along the Grand Line. Look at that the Oh, 
行ってみようちょっと待ってるって変な形の積乱雲がすごい速度で増えてるこいつはノックアップストリームだーなんだありゃおい落ちるぞ任せろクードバーサー See, I don't. Is this? I don't. See, I don't know what type of game this is. Cause is this? I don't. I. I want to. I don't think this is a fighting game. Cause that's been. That's like one of the problems with anime games. Is they're all like fighting games. So like, I want something brand right different. Mysteries. Unravel the adventure that awaits. Yeah, it seems to. It honestly reminds me of Dragon Quest. Beyond imagination. It literally might be this. It might be the same devs. I don't think so, but this reminds me a lot of Dragon Quest Eleven. あなたたちの記憶をもとに作られた世界よ。This August, Soul Hackers 2 from Atlas launches, and we've got your first listen to the English voice cast with this quick new look. So yeah, it, the thing that I think is about the show is that it, yeah, it seems to be broken up into like different sections. Like our first section was all you know your shooters, you know your horror stuff. Then we got like an indie section. Now we're in JRPG section, right? The the show seems to be broken up like that, which is technically not a bad way to suffer for, not a bad way to do it, but you do suffer when you get a section that you just don't give a shit about. Like I like that like the indie section, but now that we're in the anime section, I just don't care. And we started off in the horror slash set, right? We, the horror slash first person shooter section. Which was also pretty bad, because fuck Activision Blizzard. With so many new games featured across SGF events, you might be wondering how to plan for your summer gaming dreams. Nerd Wallet can help you find the smartest credit card to reward your gaming purchases <laughs> yeah. at nerdwallet.com. The Epic Mega Sale is going on right now. Save up to 75% off top PC titles with an additional 25% off eligible products. And it wouldn't be the Mega Sale without the free games vault featuring Maneater. Be sure to claim your copy before the sale ends on June 16th. Tune into the Epic Games Store Twitch channel for our summer showcase on June 10th at 2 p.m. Eastern and 11 a.m. Pacific. We're taking a look at new announcements and updates from PC titles heading to the store this year and beyond. Is this Game Pass? Or an X this is Xbox or Game Pass or something. Oh, streaming stuff. You're nuts. Oh, it's Samsung. So actually earlier this morning, Samsung announced that they will they're gonna have an Xbox app that just so if you own a Samsung TV, you can like stream games to your Samsung TV with xCloud without having to have an xbox you just need right xCloud with game pass or whatever that's very interesting that was an announcement earlier today i mean i'm sure you probably also need like a control you need an xbox controller or something i do actually have a samsung tv it's it works okay I definitely have my issues with it. The Capcom Arcade Collection. Again, it feels like Sega's doing one of these every other week, so... 
And this is the second one, wow. Uh, oh, Mario Strikers, yeah. That launches, what, tomorrow? Might be next week, but I think it's tomorrow. Chaos reigns supreme. So, prepare to do whatever Honestly, Nintendo's been here more than, with so Nintendo's been here way more than I expected. I know twice, but yeah, that's twice is still more than nothing. And yet, they're one of the few companies not involved in the Summer Games Fest. Hi, my name is Carl, and I'm a developer on Metal Hellsinger. You know how in some games where the music's really good, you feel compelled to move and shoot to the beat? But what if you had to? In metal, the better you are at slaying to the beat, the more intense everything gets. And we have vocal performances from legendary artists like Serge Tankian from. Sixth I just think of. Uh... Banging isn't mandatory. We do recommend it. Our demo Ooh. is live now. On Devil May Cry 5, where um, the better you played, the better the music sounded. So people are like, "Oh, guess what? I guarantee you, game reviewers are gonna complain about how bad the music sounds, even though um." Because, right, they're not good at the game. It's bullshit, but it was funny. That one was Metal Hellsinger coming later this year from Funcom, a rhythm shooter with metal music. And right now, as they mentioned, a demo has launched on yeah, PC. Not a bad idea. PlayStation for you to play for free. Next up, a new game launches tomorrow. The Quarry from Supermassive Games. This spiritual successor to Until Dawn stars David Arquette. And oh, yeah. Star okay, Cast I had heard about great this. Reviews, and this is one of those binge-worthy teen horror entertainment experiences I actually I, I think it I think it was this game where they were talking about like accessibility features here's the first look and how like family because it's one of those like movie style like games where you like pick the choices and there's like all these elements of like your whole family being able to like you know pick choices but then watch like the other choices without having to like replay the entire game, right? So like you can see some of the splits, and it's all in the name of accessibility, what and whatnot. But I actually give them a lot of credit for taking that commitment, because you know some developers would have you replay the game like eight times to see all the different endings. I think that was this game. I think that was the quarry. What? There is a lot more to this than you realize. Like what? Kidnapping, murder, cover-ups. I think the whole Hackett family is in on it. You have no idea what's going on here. Not a goddamn clue. All right, let's do this. Run. Who should I call? 911. You mean 911? Who says 911? Goodbye, cruel world. We gotta get out. I'm gonna enjoy watching you die. This isn't a ghost story. It's a creature feature. It's really happening, and you're all in it. This is gonna get a little messy. Them's the rules, you noob. Back at the Game Awards, we were proud to reveal Nightingale, a shared world survival crafting game from Inflection Games up in Canada. 
Now it's time to give you a brand new look and deeper look at the game, including its innovative realm card system that lets you impact things like the weather pattern, resources, and challenges in its procedural realms. Here is your exclusive new look. You're alone in the realms, I'm afraid. The portals are a mess. Not even sure if Nightingale made it. Given how it is survi it's another survival game. I'd say that staying fed, dry, and rested should be your priority. If the portal arch is inactive, you'll need to make realm cards from rare resources. Once you have realm cards, you can activate the portal. Beware them. Foul things lurk in the interrealmic void, waiting to get in. Oh, what was that game? I was like, do you already with your axe pick. Again, this is another genre that I think is just kind of overdone in modern gaming, because it's easy to make them into like live service, you know, play everyday style games. What was that one Viking one called? It wasn't called Norse. No, Norse was the movie that came out earlier this year. Not... That's something else. Um... Valhalla? Was that what it was called? And, like, everyone was playing it for, like, three weeks and then nobody's thought of it since. I'm, like, very cynical today. Some of it's deserved. Some of it's unwarranted. I, but it's the fucking game industry, you know? The whole thing's rotten to the core. The Saints are marching in on August... Here's Saints Row. Saints Row that we revealed last year at Gamescom. And yep. today, we're happy to announce the launch of the Boss Factory demo across PC and console, which lets you design and set up I... your character. And since it's Saints Row, you guys are going to have a I lot like of Saints fun Row. Specifically, Saints Row 4. Saints Row uh, 3, I feel like, is overrated. Like, it gets, like, they give it way too much attention when it's not actually that great. But I like Saints Row 4, and I never played the first two. Even though I know people actually really did like the second one. Yeah, no, Saints Row um, 3, I think it's super overrated. Like, like, it doesn't go far enough, and it just has these weird-ass moments that I just, that, like, I just don't think are funny or interesting. Perfect. Yeah, Saints Row is, you know, weird Grand Theft Auto. And that does work sometimes, but not all the time. I mean, at least it's, I mean, at least it's more custom, I mean, I call, you know, it's easy to call Saints Row a GTA ripoff. Even though I think, that, I think it's differentiated itself enough. God, at least it actually has fucking character customization. GTA's character, GTA 5's characters are just the ugliest fucking things in existence. And they all look kind of the same. I don't know, part of me still expects, expects Saints Row to get delayed, because it's supposed to come out in August, but I guess not. I guess not. I don't know. Next, we've got an exclusive oh, first look at extended gameplay of Warhammer 40k Dark Tide. Fat Shark's Warhammer is just too much for me. Vermintide series. Dark Tide promises intense four-player co-op action and terrifying enemy hordes to team up against. And it's out on September 13th for PC, 
on Steam and exclusively on console on Xbox. Manufacturer on HL7836 is heading towards a power systems failure thanks to a bit of heretic sabotage. So you're going to restore the coolant and hopefully save the day. Get in. Access the operations array and use the cryonic rods to flush the system. Preferably before something explodes. Head on through the ventilation tunnels and look for an access point. This way! Move it! Yeah, I just don't, I just don't care about Warhammer, like, like, it's one of those things, like, I definitely should check it, specifically the, is it the tabletop version, with, like, the actual miniatures, it's something that I'd love to, like, try out one day, at, like, a, like, a, like, just somebody who's got, like, a lot more set up into it, but I know it also takes a lot of money. Today, they are ready to reveal their latest creation made completely in Unreal Engine 5 for a visceral horror experience. It's a return to the world of layers of fears. Get a dose of this. They did. This is really another so layers of fear game? Runs in our really? I mean, this is Bluebird Team, right? Run. Which we thought was doing something Silent Hill related. And they still might be, but really, another layers of fear. Yeah, I hear from what I hear, people are, have very mixed feelings about. Again, I don't play horror games, but I know people have mixed feelings about layers of fear games. So yeah, unrelated, I did look up, and yeah, Goat Simulator 2 just doesn't exist. Straight up, right, they just, they just, they did, they pulled a Naked Gun 33 and a third, and just skipped a bunch. Or skipped the second one. Even though there was a Naked Gun 2 and a half. I think that's fun. Again, I, I liked Goat Simulator. It was, it was charming in its own stupid way. It is on Game Pass. Should I play that again? Eh, yeah, probably not. I was trapped in this house, bound by this body. Sorry, it's not that mic. Now, I break free. Layers of fears. This October, Gotham, Gotham Knights. Knights arrives. Batman is dead, and it's up to the Batman family, Batgirl, Nightwing, Red Hood, and There's Robin, no way he's dead. He's gonna... To give us an exclusive new look... Let's Do we know which Robin it is? Is it Tim Drake or is it Damian Wayne? 
I would guess it would be Damien, but I don't actually know. I'm from WB Games Montreal. I'm Flamarty. I'm the executive producer on Gotham Knights. I don't know. I, I want this game to be good. A lot of people seem to be against it. But I like Darkham Asylum. I like Darkham City. I want to replay Arkham Asylum. But, yeah, I, I, I want these games to be good. Never played Arkham Knight. Definitely didn't play Arkham Origins. You know, a lot of people really seem to be against this one. And... I had nothing. And then this city became my home. Its people became my family. Gotham gave me everything. It deserves to feel safe. Uh, yeah, because people are mad about the Fortnite glider. People are mad about Jason Todd using magic. dead and Batman's no longer around so like everybody knows that Bruce Wayne was Batman then right that was Gotham Knights and now we welcome oh look who it is Neil Druckmann from Naughty Dog uh, co-president of Naughty here Dog. it is uh, great to have yep. you with us Neil it's been a uh, an eventful yep. day on the internet Again. for Naughty Dog fans it and leaked and earlier today we were joking about last night like watch the ass as it's a leak and yes. lo and behold well, the good news is there's some stuff that hasn't leaked that we have lots to share with people about uh, all things at Naughty Dog. But first of all, it is a, you know, it's a big month actually for Last of Us fans because uh, Last of Us 1 and 2 both launched in June and it's nearing its two-year anniversary for Last of Us uh, That's Part 2. That's crazy to think about. To believe. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, that doesn't um, feel like that long ago. Last of Us 1, two years for Last of Us Part 2, and we still hear from fans. I have it. I own Last of Us Part 2. I got it for like a tenner, like a year back. Um, and I, no, and it's, it's I got it for like a tenner back in like probably November. And I've just been sitting on it. And that kind of support, that kind of success, um, we're so grateful to our fans. It has allowed us to grow as a studio, and now we can take on multiple projects more than we've ever had at the same time. Multiple projects, okay, very interesting. So, uh, what can Last of, Us, Last of Us fans expect in the future from you? Thank you for asking, Jeff. Yes. Uh, so one of the things we've mentioned a while back is what started out as a multiplayer mode has evolved due to the team's ambition. They really wanted to do something beyond what we've ever done before at Naughty Dog. And we felt the way to do it justice is to make it a standalone title. And over the, they've been working on it for the past two years. Ambition has grown. And we're not quite ready to fully unveil it, but we're ready to lift the current a little bit and just give you like an update of where we're at. Okay, well, uh, what can you tell us about this new standalone multiplayer game? Yeah, so uh, we have a concept art that we want to show. Yeah. Um, uh, but what, what I can tell you there Whoa. is that this game is big. Okay. Um, it's as big as any of our single player games that we've done and in some ways bigger. It's got a story. Um, the way we're telling that story is very unique to this game. Um, it's got a brand new cast of characters. It takes place at another place. Uh, another part of the United States. It's like a city might be somewhat familiar to some people. I'm sure our fans have already figured it out. Um, what? Uh, and it's, it's, it's really cool. And it's, it's being headed by Vinith Agarwal, um, Anthony Newman, oh. and... Uh, this was San Francisco and getting all the video games Charter recently. I mean, that was Horizon yeah, Forbidden West. This game come next year. Next year. So I wait till next year to hear more about that one. Okay. Well, very exciting that uh, this has evolved. And I mean, that concept art looks incredible. I can't wait to see... Naughty Dog storytelling fused with multiplayer live game. Uh, it's, Again, it's we're getting so many multiplayer live games because okay, well, uh, every game has to be a live wall, service to, you know, to feed into the blockchain. Day, like up in Calgary, they're filming the Last of Us show the, for HBO. Yep, they're right? doing the show. 
Yeah, so uh, for the past year, um, you know, we've teamed up with Craig Mazin of Chernobyl fame and HBO to adapt The Last of Us into a TV, uh, TV show. Um, they've been filming and uh, it's I mean, incredible. I if I'm getting back when we're looking at I mean, back, I actually back. I don't want The Last of Us show to be bad. I mean, I didn't want the Halo show to be bad, but admittedly, I haven't seen it, but even from people being generous to it. Uh, it hasn't been I, I pretty. I couldn't be proud of, like, again, Craig and that whole crew. Yeah, no, at, so, Sonic uh, and Poke, the Sonic, the two Sonic movies, so and Detective screen, Pikachu have proved that video game Sonic movies right? can so be good. Up. Especially uh, the second, I, I enjoyed the crap out of that second Sonic you movie. you actually got to direct one of the episodes? Uh, yes, uh, I think that really speaks to the kind of collaboration and trust that exists between Naughty Dog and HBO that they invited me to direct one of the episodes. Um, I think we have an image from the episode that I actually directed. Ooh, okay. Um, we can first look. Let's take a look. Uh, wow. So you can see uh, this is a certain museum that yep. players might know from the game. Um, and I really have to talk about Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey and not only directing them but seeing them do all the other episodes. They've thrown themselves at these yeah, roles um, for a whole year. Watching the nuance that they bring to these characters, their relationship on and off camera, I couldn't help but think about Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson. It felt so similar to the chemistry those two actors had when we made the game. Um, and it really feels like this is gonna be something special. And I, I will say this will be the most authentic video yeah. game adaptation yet. Well, I mean, that first image that they put out, it just, I mean, it feels like the video game, everything that I've seen, both public and other stuff, makes it feel sort of super legitimate, you said, and that's awesome to see uh, Joel and Ellie from, from the front side now for the first time. Um, so we'll see more of that uh, next year that's coming as well, right, Sirius? Uh, you'll hear about it very soon. That's, that's okay. all I'll say right now. All right. Well, Last of Us HBO, very, very exciting. Uh, and I hear you actually have a couple actors from the show who are uh, going to join we us here. We happen to have a couple actors here that are part of the show. We should bring them up. Okay. Come on up. Oh, what's up, guys? Oh, hello. <laughs> Surprise. Tro Troy's back again. Hello, I know. Hi. <laughs> It was uh, inevitable. I'm a little confused, though. I, I thought maybe Pedro Bella, but Troy Astro out here uh, from the game, right? So uh, when Craig and I started working on the show, almost one of our very first games. Yeah, yeah it was inevitable that Troy, Troy was going to come back in some work. form. Um, and we're such fans of, like, the talent and, the hel like, helping us create Joel and Ellie. Um, we felt like it was so important that they become part of the show. And it wasn't, it's, it has to be more than just, like, kind of like a wink to the camera and, like, a cameo. Okay. These are real roles. So we're keeping on the wraps for now, uh -huh. uh, but man, I was, I'm bummed that I couldn't be there with you guys when you filmed this stuff. That, there's been so much it's stuff so, I feel like so good. on the internet, there's so much like talk about what's being filmed and I think that's, you guys have kept a complete <sighs> secret that you, so you were up there and you, you filmed your roles by now. So I'm going to guess this is, this Last of Us stuff is the last stuff. Like, we've had like unless, because you know, it's <laughs> always end on a big thing uh, it was, it was and the Last of Us remake, while well, we've all, while well, this leaked you like know, a year ago, so right? We've known that this thing existed. This is like the big thing to end on. So if I'm going to guess, this is what they're going to end on. Maybe there'll be one big... Because again, you need a big end. This is a hard-learned lesson that both... That Nintendo learned, and then Sony had to relearn, right? Sony like forgot it, and then had to relearn it. Yeah, I, I, the attention to detail... The crew was amazing. Because Xbox, Bella yeah, yeah, Pedro I'm sure Xbox are, knows it as well. I can't think of a good example. I, they're so perfect. I can think of PlayStation it, examples. It, we, we've been trying to sort of describe that feeling of sort of seeing them in person. It's it's like it's like the characters coming to life, but it it it's so much more than that. I feel like I can't fully explain it, but I am so excited to be a part of it and just. I can't wait to see it. I think it is going to be so good. It's it's. I love the story. I love no, just I, being I'm, a part of it. I'm so world. excited about the series and the fact that you guys are going to be in it and undisclosed roles. I'm so fascinated how it's going to sort of bob and weave in and, you know, are these characters we know from the game that they're playing? New characters? Can you tell us anything? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can tell you. So sneaky. All right. Well, we're so excited. To Maybe it's already on Twitter by now. <laughs> hey. All right. Well, let's talk about what was on Twitter earlier uh, today. Lots of talk about uh, the idea, or really what's happening is it looks like you guys are remaking the original game, and this is like a ground-up remake. Is that right? That's right. Uh, we wanted to give people the definitive version of the, the first game that wasn't encumbered by any technology 
uh, wanted to find a way to get even closer. I mean, it was originally a PS3 game, uh, and the PS3 the PS5 is a fucking mess. Instead of talk about it, let's look at it. I've heard, uh, from what I've heard of people trying to emulate the PS3, it, emulating it's a nightmare. So yeah. So why'd you leave Boston? I've been on quite the adventure, little brother. I reckon he's got something to do with that girl. He's got everything to do with that little girl. I mean, I know visually, Last of Us 2 was very impressive. It's the outside. So is that everything you hope for? I don't know. I, play, I played The Last of Us. I liked it. I just think... I don't, like, a lot of people th see it as, like, the best thing in gaming ever and, like, constantly give it a lot of attention. And, nah, it's good. It's overrated, but it's good. Upon a time, I had somebody that I cared about. Maybe I need to play it again with fresh eyes. For one thing. Or you in perspective that I now, you know. I How many close calls have we had? I don't know. I get in trouble down there. You make every shot count. It's also the other thing that I think has the last of us against me personally is that it's just a grim fest. Truly one of my favorite games of the past. And like that's not what I come to gaming for. I come to gaming to have fun. That that's why I'm so anti live service uh, games. It's because they're just not fun. NFT gaming yeah, sounds like a fucking nightmare. The, the way people describe it, it's completely unrealistic, but no. I come to have fun. A lot of these things turn gaming into a fucking job. on these new rigs that have a lot more fidelity, and then the animators went back and studied... We're sitting side-by-sides here, just how much it has changed, that you went and you redid the models and rebuilt everything? Everything was re uh, rebuilt from the ground up. Uh, same art director, re-art directed the whole thing from the ground up. Um, but the, the great thing about these faces is that um, they're closer to the original performance. Our, all the animators went and studied those videos and got it closer to what you did on set than we could have achieved before. Um, and that's just like one of the things um, we could talk about, like this brand new AI, like all the combat is, like, is, is redone. Um, just you know what it is going to be? Um, the Last of Us, the accessibility features in The Last of Us 2 were very impressive. So to get all of that in the first game is also going to be very nice. Because, yeah, literally uh, anybody could play The Last of Us Part 2. I, I actually played it... That's just, kind of how, that's just kind of how accessible the game was. I mean, I know there was one or two things they left out, but, you know, it's still... It was very good. So I'm sure getting that into the first game is actually going to be very nice. Part 1 straight into Part 2. Um, and so the last time that I played literally would have been two years ago since we're celebrating the anniversary of part two coming out. So, I mean, it looks like I'm definitely going to be up for another yeah, playthrough I can't, with this. I mean, yeah. I can't wait to go back. It oh, I can't a, wait. Uh, you guys did such an amazing job on that original game. And it's, it's really when you play it, when you see it in motion, it's really yeah. night and day from what, what it used to be. I imagine that, you know, the, think of The Last of Us 2 combat, but kind of that back in The Last of Us 1. Well, it's the whole, like, all the yeah. new animation system, the new AI system, everything we've learned on, like, Uncharted 4, Last of yeah. Us 2, we apply to this, wow. again, to give that definitive version. Just to give a quick shout-out, uh, this project is headed up by uh, Matthew Gallant and Shauna Sky. Okay. Uh, and you'll hear a lot more about it and see a lot more about it over the coming weeks leading up to the release September 2nd on PS5. All right. And well, shortly thereafter on PC. We will look forward to it. You, Neil, you've talked a lot about games directed by other people what, what are you directing you still making games still making games okay. uh, I haven't given up my, my day job uh, it's a little early to talk about it. maybe if someone in place wants to leak it then we can yeah. talk about it now uh, otherwise oh my uh, we'll he's taking shots do you have a new project not like I blame him at all because it okay. does kind of suck when things like that leak okay because well, again we'll for the executives who fucking Detroit, cares Detroit, but for the people on the ground who have been put right pulled up so by their bootstraps who are just trying to make a good game. Because, again, I don't think The Last of Us needed to be remade. Right, but, well, you know, gonna do people it. are going to put that for it. It does, does kind of suck. Uh, look at The Last of Us and the entire franchise and where things are going. Um, very, very excited about that. All right, Summer Game Fest continues over the next few days. Coming up right now on this very stream is Day of the Dez with I am 8-Bit and Double Fine, including an exclusive new look at the Planet of Lana.
and then the Devolver Digital Showcase. Tomorrow, now, we've got Netflix. I will not be streaming the Devolver Sony Digital Showcase. showcase. I love it. Showcase. I will be watching it definitely, but I will not be streaming finally, it. Next Sunday, it's the Xbox Next time we will be back is Sunday for Xbox. Well, of course I'll in chat it's Saturday night, me, but I'll see you again in August when we are back live in Cologne, Germany for Gamescom opening night live on August 23rd. And then the Game Awards will return in December live from the yep. Microsoft Theater in Los Angeles. And finally, I'm excited to share that Summer Game Fest will return in June 2023 as a digital yep. and in-person event to bring the gaming community together. Thanks for being a part of Summer Game Fest. And remember, there are more events and announcements to come. We'll see you soon. I really wish Nintendo had just committed and been like, yep, we're doing the Summer Games Fest thing. But no. So, uh, thoughts on the show? Um, I was bored for like half of it at least. Oh my god, that just went on forever. I think part of the... Okay, so when I talk about indie showcases in the past, I've talked about how, oh, indie showcases are designed with broad appeal. So as long as you walk away with one game you like, the showcase has been successful. And I feel like that, with Summer Games Fest not belonging to any studio, I feel like that's the best way to treat Summer Games Fest as well. That as long as you walk away with, let's say, three things you liked, which I would say I walked away with about three things, maybe f probably closer to five, but, you know, right, right around like the hour mark when they were doing all the indie stuff. I was like, oh, this looks interesting. Oh, yeah, that might be fun. So yeah, that was when I was interested in it. The rest of the show, though, everything that came before that and after that, I just didn't care for. It The first hour, the f or not even the first hour, probably the first like 45 minutes, were just excruciating, man. Oh my god. And then by the, the last like 30-ish minutes were also same thing. I don't know, they definitely talked about The Last of Us for, a while, for like 20 minutes. But I'm, oh my god, I'm so, I'm so tired. Oh gosh. I don't, do I think it was a, I mean, again, the biggest reveal of the thing, The Last of Us remake, technically it was rumored like a year ago and it got leaked earlier today and that does suck. But yeah, other than that, it was just a very broad show, but I, 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 I'm not going to say I hate it. I was just kind of bored. Some people will argue that being bored is actually, like, being having a show be boring is worse than having the show be bad. And they might be right, but, yeah, I, whatever. Um, so, but Devolver Digital Showcase is in, like, two hours, and that's going to be very good. Devolver has yet, Devolver, Devolver has succeeded so much at these showcases that, like, they've earned all benefits of the doubt. It's going to be a really fun showcase. Uh, yeah, no, that's going to be great. So, yeah, definitely keep an eye out for that in two hours. I probably won't be streaming it. Then, uh, Xbox, then tomorrow, we might do some. I might stream something tomorrow. I don't know. I, I definitely want to get into regular streaming sooner, sooner at least, again, because we're already t almost ten days in June. But then, w definitely in chat will be Saturday. We've got a few things to talk about, like this. I'll talk about the Devolver Showcase, Sonic Central, um, other stuff, definitely. And then Xbox is Sunday. Um, Capcom Showcase is Monday, but I will not be streaming that because I don't care. And then there is a rumored Nintendo Showcase on the 16th. They have yet to reveal that as of this moment, but the Nintendo Showcase is re rumored to be the 16th. So, and I could see them announcing it on the 14th, right? On the 14th, they're like, hey, there'll be a, sh there'll be the, a Nintendo Direct on the 16th. That's just the rumor at the moment, but yeah. So yeah, uh, with that, I hope you all enjoyed. Stay tuned for more. Until next time, peace.